Hello everyone and welcome to MATLAB and Simulink tutorials. The main emphasis of these tutorials is on how to solve practical problems arising in control engineering and signal processing in Simulink. However, the knowledge presented in these tutorials can also be applied to other fields. In this particular tutorial, we will learn how to solve two important problems that might arise when you try to simulate a dynamical system in Simulink. The first problem is how to automatically export certain variables and time series from Simulink environment to MATLAB workspace. And the second problem is how to plot on the same graph simulation results obtained by running two independent simulations. And this technique is very important when running simulations for two different parameters and when you want to compare the results of two simulations. To make the long story short, over here you can see a simple feedback control system. This is our plant. It's a simple first order system and this is a PI, that is Proportional Integral Controller. First of all, you will learn how to export the output of such a system and this control input directly to MATLAB workspace. To illustrate that, I will run this simulation and I will open my MATLAB workspace. And over here, if you type who's, you can see this structure and this structure contains input and output of our simulation. Once you have these sequences, you can either plot them or you can perform some additional analysis on the extracted time series. For example, you can compute fast Fourier transform or you can save this data and use it in some other programming language such as Python or C. Secondly, you will learn how to solve this problem. For example, this is our step input and let's change this parameter to one and let's click on apply and click on OK. If we run the simulation, over here, we can see the response of the system. Since the feedback control system is stable, the output perfectly tracks the input. However, let us say that we want on the same graph to plot the step response when the input is equal to 5. So let's try to do that. I will close this graph. I will double click over here and let's change this step value to 5. Now we want our system to track 5 and if I run my simulation and if I double click over here I can clearly see the response for step input equal to 5. However, I don't see the other graph. Consequently, in this video tutorial I will teach you how to plot on the same graph the simulation results obtained for different parameters and for running different simulations. This is a very useful technique when comparing simulation results obtained by tuning certain parameters or changing some initial conditions. But before I start with the explanations, I would like to mention the following. It took me a significant amount of time, energy and planning to create this video tutorial as well as other video tutorials that you can find on my website and on my YouTube page. And consequently, I kindly ask you to press the like and subscribe buttons. Thank you very much. Okay, let's start. The first step is to open Simulink. I like to open Simulink by typing in MATLAB workspace Simulink. Then let's create a blank model. The first step is to create a feedback control algorithm. Let's do that. This is not a difficult task. First of all, let us create our transfer function. I'm double clicking here on this empty workspace and I will type here transfer function. Okay, let us expand this window and let us change the parameters over here. For example, we can have a transfer function that looks like this. Okay, next, let us create our PI controller. To create the PI controller, we need an integrator. So here's our integrator. Next, we need an integrator, integrator gain. 
So I'll type gain over here. This is a simple constant that will multiply the integrator gain. And let us choose the integrator gain to be equal to 2. Next, let us connect these blocks. Over here we need a summation. Here's our summation symbol. Double click over here and change the position of plus signs. I will do it like that, like this. Then let's connect these parts and let's add a proportional gain. Over here I will do a double click and I will simply search for a gain. So here's my proportional gain and let's select proportional gain to be equal to 3. I don't care here about the stability of the system since I will tune these param parameters 3 and 2 such that the closed loop system is stable. Next, let us create the feedback loop and the error term. I will double click over here and I will click on summation and I will change the signs. This will be a minus sign. Let's enlarge this block and let's create our feedback loop by connecting the output of our plant to this block over here. This part over here is our error. Over here we need an input signal. This will be a simple step signal. Over here if you double click you can change the step time. Let us choose the step time to be equal to 0 and let's choose the final value of 1. And let's click on OK. And let's connect this block to our summation. Next we need to simply connect our proportional gain to the error and this is our system. Let us add a scope over here such that we can plot the results and let's connect the output of the plan to our scope. Perfect. Let us simulate this system and let's see the response. If you double click over here you can see that the output tracks the step input and consequently the closed loop system is asymptotically stable. Next, let us export the output of our system as well as the control input to our MATLAB workspace such that we can play with these time series later on. To do that, I will double click over here and I will type to workspace. Click over here and you, you will open this block. So let's analyze this block. Here we can choose the variable name. I will call this variable output1. You shouldn't play with this parameter since this is just an introductionary tutorial. Don't play with the summation. You can choose an ar array as an output format and click on OK. Of course, you can read help and you can also analyze and learn more about other options. However, since I want to make this video as short as possible, I will not explain these other options. And let's click on OK. And the next step is just to connect this block here to the output. We will do the same thing for the input to workspace. Let us change the name of the variable input 1 and let's click on OK. Connect this block to the input and let's run the simulation. OK, so far so good. Next, let us go to our MATLAB workspace and let's see who's. Aha, uh -huh. over here I can see that I have a class or better to say a data structure and let us type out and let's see what is out. Aha, uh -huh. out has certain variables stored. We have input 1 and output 1. And input 1 and output 1 are actually the output and the input of our system. Let us plot these variables on the same graph or on separate graphs. To do that, I will open a new script. And in this new script, I will simply write plot. And to access this variable, you just need to write out dot t 
t-out. t-out is the time, is the simulation time you used in your simulink, simulink environment. And let's first plot the output of a system. I can do that by typing out.output1. And let's create a figure. Let's see the result. Aha, here it is. Here is the output of our system, and this output is exactly the output that you can see on our scope. Next, let us create another figure that will show the input. I will again type plot out.t out, and over here I will type out.input1. And let's see the result. And over here you might have an issue and the issue comes that the plot method can only be used for a single time series object. So let's investigate this error further. You can see that input 1 is a time series. That is, we did not properly correct for this data type. To correct for that, we'll go back to our Simulink environment and we'll click over here and we'll change this parameter and change it to array. Click on OK, run the simulation again. This thing will overwrite the MATLAB workspace and let's see our now the workspace. Let's see out one and over here you can see that now input one is also time is also an array. Consequently let us plot the input. Here is our input. This is the control input. Next, let us learn how to plot simulation results obtained by running two different simulations on the same graph. For example, in the first simulation, the value of the step input signal was 1. However, let us assume that in the second simulation, I want to change this value to 5. And I want to run the simulation and I want to plot the results. However, I don't want to use a new graph, I want to plot the result on the same graph, that is, on the graph generated by running the simulation number one. You cannot do that simply on the same scope since the scope will simply erase the simulation result from the first simulation. To obtain this way of plotting, we need to do something else. We need to go back to our MATLAB workspace and we need to copy the values of output and input and to create the new variables. Consequently, over here I will create a new variable and I will copy the value of input from my simulation to this new variable. The same thing will be done for the output. And also, I need to extract time. I will call the variable time out.time1. T out. Okay, I'm doing this since MATLAB will overwrite this structure once I run the simulation for a new set of parameters. And you will see that in a moment. Let us evaluate these code lines. And let's type whose. Good. We have input 1, output 1, and time 1. And we have out. Next time we run the simulation, out will be overwritten. However, input 1, output 1, and time 1 will not be overwritten. Next, let us change the simulation constants. For example, here the final value of our step input signal will be 5 in the second simulation and over here I will change the name of the variables I will call the variable input 2 and this variable will be called output 2 and I will click on OK let's run the simulation and let's analyze the MATLAB workspace type whose and type out over here you can see that we have input 2 output 2 and t out. Good. 
Next, I will extract these variables like this. This will be input 2. This will be output 2. And this will be time 2. Let's evaluate these code lines. Good. And let's see our workspace. Cool. So far, so good. Next, I need to plot the outputs of two simulations. I can do that by simply using the plot command. Here, for the first simulation, I have time 1. And I have output 1. And let's select the color, for example, red color. And let's plot the simulation results for the second simulation. And let's choose the black line. And let's see the results. Here it is. This is the step response of the first simulation. And this is the second, second step response. That is the step response of the second simulation. And in this way, you can plot simulation results coming from five different simulations for example okay that would be all for today i hope that you liked this video if you like the videos i create please press the like and subscribe buttons thank you very much and have a nice day